hear of many famous Black Canadian singers, such as Ruth B. Drake, and so on. But have you ever heard of Eleanor Collins? No, I've never heard of her. Who is she? Eleanor Collins was the first ever Black woman to become a jazz singer, also known as the First Lady of Jazz. When was she born? She was born on November 21st, 1919, and only passed away during the research of this project on March 3rd, 2024. Oh my gosh, that means she was 105 when she died. We all hope to live till that age. Eleanor Collins grew up in Edmonton, Alberta, her parents of Black and Creole Indian heritage. In the late 1930s, she moved to Vancouver, where she sang from 1940 to 1942 on CBC Radio with the gospel group Swing Low Quartet, which included her sisters Ruby Sneed and Pearl Brown. This began her long association with CBC, which included performances on the radio show Serenade in Rhythm, which was broadcast to troops overseas. Eleanor Collins was the first Canadian woman and the first Black entertainer in Canada to have her own national television show. CBC's TV's The Eleanor Show in 1955. Often compared to the American singer Lena Horne, Collins performed on many television and radio variety shows, as well as in clubs. She was a member of the Order of Canada and the BC Entertainment Hall of Fame, and the recipient of numerous Lifetime Achievement Awards. Canada Post released a commemorative stamp in her honour in January 2022. What about her family? Great question, Dahlia. In 1942, she married Richard Collins and began a family, in which she eventually had four children. The family moved to suburb Burnaby, where, as their community's first Black family, they were met with the prejudice in the form of an unsuccessful petition to prevent them from moving in. To combat the prejudice, the family made special efforts to fit into the neighborhood as role models. Eleanor volunteered at school and taught music to girl guides. It makes me so happy to think any part of my story and history might have inspired you, said Collins at the time. My life continues to be blessed with some of the most amazing people, like each of you. She became a civic leader, using her music to fundraise at Victory Bond rallies and World Brotherhood and International Week events, among other social causes. Was she the one who said the quote, I still believe in chasing dreams and placing bets, but I have learned that all you give is all you got. There's a life after a hundred. I want to give it all I got. She did, but that was later in her career. Speaking of her career, Collins began to perform frequently in the 1950s. In 1954, she made her television debut in, on CBC Vancouver's groundbreaking variety show, Bamboola, A Day in the West Indies. The series lasted only three episodes, but was noteworthy as the first Canadian television show with a mixed race cast as well as the first live music TV show broadcasted from Vancouver. Her career remained concentrated on various CBC shows and on live club dates and other performances in the Vancouver area with such jazz musicians as Chris Cage, Lance Harrison, Doug Parker, and Dave Robbins. Eleanor began her career in the 1940s, performing in clubs and on radio before transitioning to television. Her early experiences helped shape her into the polished performer she became. She showcased her versatility as an entertainer, taking on both singing and acting roles. Didn't she get numerous awards and honors throughout her career, including the Order of Canada in 2017 for her contribution to the Canadian culture and broadcasting? I think she did a lot of things. What were they again? She did win awards. She won BC Entertainment Hall of Fame star in 1992, Distinguished Centennial Pioneer Award in 1986, BC Black Historical Society Award, Alberta Black Cultural Research Society Award, Actress Sam Payne Award in 2006. Eleanor was in music, theater, film, television, radio, dance, and opera. She also worked as a manager, impresario, director, and producer. Wow. So, she did so many things. Did she do anything else? She did so many things. But with the arrival of the 1970s and the decline in popularity of variety shows, Collins was heard less often. But she continued to make occasional appearances over the following decades. One such appearance 
was for Canada Day celebrations on Parliament Hill in 1975. She was also seen in the 1977 television special Easter in Israel. During this period, she became music director at Unity Church in Vancouver. Let's not forget that in the 1980s, Collins returned to Edmonton to sing at the Jazz City International Jazz Festival. She also sang with the Tommy Banks Orchestra performing on CBC's radio Jazzland in 1981, singing for a benefit at Vancouver's Hot Jazz Club in 1988, and interviewing for CBC's TV's Then and Now. So what happened later on in her life? Well, she accomplished so much when she was young. Collins sang with saxophonist Fraser McPherson at the Vancouver nightclub, Richards on Richards, and performed at tribute to CBC host Bob Smith at Vancouver's Commodore Ballroom. The Collins family was profiled in the 1994 video documentary, Hymn to Freedom, The History of Blacks in Canada. Collins also continued to occasionally perform in her 80s and beyond, singing annually at Vancouver's Orpheum Theatre for Remembrance Day shows and occasionally for her church. For Black History Month in 2015, she sang at a fundraiser for an anti-racism program. Oh my gosh, she never caught a break with everything she was doing. Not only that, but she became member of the Order of Canada May 8, 2014, in Ottawa, November 21, 2014, and on the occasion of Collins' 95th birthday, she was invested into the Order of Canada. Her official citation reads as follows. Eleanor Collins, CM. In 1948, she was ostracized upon moving into one of the city's prominently white neighborhoods. She responded by fostering the values of equality and acceptance within her community and consequently became a civic leader and pioneer in the development of British Columbia's music industry. Celebrated for her extensive career as a jazz singer with CBC Radio and Television, she became the first Black artist in North America to host a nationally broadcast television series. Wow, she really was a hero. How many awards did she win? Dahlia, I already told you the awards that she won. She won seven awards between the years 1986 and 2015. She really was a successful woman. But what were some of her famous songs? Dahlia, I already told you the awards that she won. She won seven awards between the years 1986 and 2015. Her music is so relaxing and calming to listen to. Let's listen to it. No. 